Hello, <clears throat> hello, my friends. This is your friend Jay Dylan Madhav. As some of you know uh, from probably some of my previous posts, definitely my good friends know about it. I'm an insomniac basically as of the last five years, and there's various reasons why uh, medically that's the case. So I get about two to three hours of sleep every night. Not more than that. I don't know that it's healthy or not, but um, I seem to have just gotten used to it and function perfectly fine on that. So uh, it's changed my routine a lot. It's not unusual to find me at the gym at 4 o'clock in the morning when it's still dark out because I go to a 24-hour gym. But it definitely allows me to be, if I choose to, to be hyper-productive. Uh, <clears throat> working 10 or 12, 12 or even 15 hours a day is just par for the course for me. Like, I would say six to six and a half days a week. So, um, except for, you know, that half day or so that I take to uh, hang out with some friends and uh, usually Sunday, half day Sunday and uh, eat a little something, drink a little something and enjoy life a little bit but um this video is not about me this video is about you so what well, my advice for you if you have insomnia and like i said we all get it from time to time you have some stress you can't sleep you wake up at three o'clock in the morning you can't go back to bed you know the story right but mine is chronic right so this has been going on for five years doesn't bother me any, anymore at this point i've adjusted to it um, I took medication for a while. I just stopped. I just stopped doing that. I wasn't cool with all the side effects and everything. Uh, and like I said, my body just got used to it, so I functioned perfectly well. Two to three hours of sleep per night. But um, if you if you suffer from insomnia, and I hate to use that word suffer, but um, because it's subjective. I mean, it's not torture, right? But anyways, if you have insomnia. <clears throat> um, and by the way, I don't use words like suffer and um, a lot of other words before, uh, due to something called NLP, Neuro Linguistic, Neuro Linguistic Programming. And if you're interested in what that is, you can go ahead and research it on your own independently. I'll probably do actually another a video on that topic alone. It's something that Tony Robbins is very adept at and uses a lot and a lot of other um, practitioners that offer that type of therapy. But anyways, NLP is fascinating too. Um, so insomnia, going back to insomnia, it's not about me, it's about you. One thing I would give you as a word, uh, as a few words of advice, if you haven't already acquired this information on your own, is something called sleep hygiene, which is really important, helps you fall asleep. You know, we live in a very fast paced world especially if you live in a big city and you've got lots of technology and you've got your job and you've got your family and you've got your stressors, you're looking after your children, you're worrying about them, you're dealing with rush hour traffic, you're dealing with people at the job. Anyways, the stress level and the duties and responsibilities that you have just kind of keep compounding and compounding, compounding. Some people are not very good at handling those kinds of anxieties. I used to not be. I've gotten very good at it now. Now, for various reasons, uh, such as meditation and getting into Buddhism and things that I've had to do just because of life circumstances for me over the last four or five years, more like five, six years. Um, but sleep hygiene is something you should look into. Basically what sleep hygiene is, to just put it in a very layman's term, terms, and you'll understand this once I, I go through it, it's that routine that you have every night before you go to sleep, it's that decompression, it's that preparing basic, what you do and you with your environment to prepare your brain for sleep, to prepare your brain to get, your brain starts thinking, oh, okay, we're getting ready for bed now, and that then will subsequently help you fall asleep faster, unless you have severe insomnia. 
But mild to moderate, this is something you should definitely you should be adept at and be doing. Um, it's things such as, I would say, start about 45 minutes before your bedtime. It's things like starting dimming the lights a little bit. Okay, turning off some of the lights in the house. Maybe have that little cup of tea. Take that hot shower, if that's what you're into. Um, maybe get a little book ready. I, um, you know, get into bed, start doing a little bit of reading. Uh, definitely avoid screens. It's been proven that screens, such as your laptop and your cell phone, make it, because of the light, there's something about it that makes it actually more difficult for you to fall asleep. Um, so like I said, there's a whole process of sleep hygiene. You get in your, get your warm shower, okay, get your pajamas on, dim the lights, get your little tea ready, your, your nighttime beverage, your hot cocoa, whatever it is. You get the point. There's a whole list of things that you can do and research online about good sleep hygiene. I would urge you to research that and follow and try out some of these techniques if you have an insomnia. Because if your case is pretty, pretty mild and moderate, these will probably over the course of, and it may take a few days or a week, but <clears throat> it'll help you generally reset your circadian rhythms and help you overcome your insomnia issues. Um, so it's called sleep hygiene, look into it. But in short, again, it's all those little seemingly subtle things you do 30, 30 minutes, 45 minutes before you actually go and lie down in bed that help your brain decompress, get rid of all of the worries for the day, get your mental state in tune with, okay, this is bed, getting to be bedtime now, so brain, should we want our brain to start releasing melatonin? And um, I get those chemicals going so that you can fall asleep. Those are my tips for um, insomnia, especially with something you've acquired recently and it's something that continues beyond a day or two. Um, if that doesn't do it for you, then of course the next step is you want to go see your doctor, you probably want to get a sleep study done and um, just... Uh, Get some medical treatment and take it to the next level. J. Dillon Madhav, thank you for listening. It's very important, by the way, good sleep and sleep insomnia.